Yeah, uh, Dustin, if you want to read that after part five. Okay, sounds good. All right, so just as a reminder, I can certainly read it. Sure. Now, just as a reminder, this is... Um, the Precious Treasury of the Basic Space of Phenomenon by Long Chimpo. 2001 edition, translated by Lama Choki Nima. And we're on page 35. This is part five. Within mind itself, the essence of awakened mind there is no view to cultivate in meditation, no conduct to undertake, no fruition to achieve, no levels of realization or paths to traverse, no mandala to visualize, no recitation, repetition, or stage of completion, no empowerment to be bestowed, and no samaya to uphold. In the pure state that is the true nature of phenomena, timelessly and spontaneously present. Such adventitious factors of developmental effort and causality are transcended. The essence of these factors is awakened mind. Unobscured by clouds or darkness, the sun shines in the sky by its very nature, not as something adventitious. Any teaching concerning the ten attributes that involve effort and achievement is given in response to the confusion that occurs adventitiously due to the dynamic energy of awareness. It is skillful means for engaging those whose acumen requires development through effort. It is not given to yogins who genuinely experience the ultimate meaning of the Vajra heart essence, Ati Yoga. So the individuals who exert themselves in order to progress developmentally may be led to primordial basic space, the nature of phenomenon. There are the spiritual approaches of the Shravaka, the Pratyeka Buddha, and the Bodhisattva. These are the stages demonstrated on the three lesser levels. The three divisions of Kriya, Upa, and Yoga are by their very nature the three intermediate levels. The three divisions of Maha, Anu, and Ati manifest primordially as the three higher levels. By opening the doorway that leads beyond other approaches based on causes and results, they guide fortunate beings to the three levels of enlightenment. The culmination of all these, moreover, is found in the ultimate meaning of the Vajra heart essence. They must lead towards this superb supreme secret, and so utter lucidity, sublimely unchanging, is the pinnacle of them all. This is renowned as the spiritual approach of the heart essence of manifest enlightenment. Furthermore, of the two alternatives within spiritual teaching, one involves a concerted effort to accept or reject. It is taught in order to refine away the habitual patterns of ordinary mind and mental events, whose nature it is to arise as a display due to dynamic energy. This approach holds that timeless awareness is purer than ordinary mind. The supreme teaching involves no concerted effort to accept or reject. Naturally occurring timeless awareness, the essence of awakened mind itself, is made fully evident in that one does not waver from the direct experience of it. So there is no need to strive for it elsewhere. It rests in and of itself, so do not seek it elsewhere. This, the ultimate meaning of suchness itself, is like the essence of the sun, 
I hold that it abides as a natural state of rest, unwavering, utter lucidity. It can be shown that other approaches are like attempts to create the already present sun by dispelling clouds and darkness through a process of effort and achievement. Therefore, these two kinds of approach are as different as heaven and earth. Nowadays, those elephants who pride themselves on being Ati practitioners allege that thought patterns stirring and proliferating are awake in mind. All of these fools are submerged in darkness, far from the meaning of natural great perfection. They do not understand even dynamic energy or what arises from that energy, to say nothing of the essence of awakened mind. In this discussion of mind, primordially pure awakened mind is ultimate truth, the true nature of phenomenon as basic space. Beyond description or imagination, it is the perfection of sublime knowing. Inherently unwavering, it is utterly lucid by nature and timelessly free of elaboration, of concepts stirring and proliferating, and so it is called the essence of being analogous to the orb of the sun. Its dynamic energy is unobstructed awareness as a continuous mode for what arises and is free of both conceptualization and analysis. Though vividly lucid, it does not entail dualistic perception. Awareness expresses itself through its dynamic energy as consciousness that involves conceptual elaboration, marked by the myriad dualistic habitual patterns that such consciousness generates. Since what are not objects are misconstrued as objects, there are five kinds of sense objects, and since what has no identity is invested with identity, there are five afflictive emotions. These constitute all possible confused perception of the universe and the beings within it. Even what manifests as samsara arises due to the dynamic energy, but when this is not realized, the manifestation itself is one of er erroneous perception. Through realization, Within the vast expanse of being of the true nature of phenomena, coming from nowhere, going nowhere, and abiding nowhere at all, there is the enlightened intent of the total freedom of the three realms. This is the transmission of Ati, spontaneous presence, the Vajra heart essence, arising from the wholly positive expanse of supreme spaciousness. <clears throat> Within the essence of totally pure awakened mind, there is no object to view or anything that constitutes a view, not the slightest sense of anything to look at or anyone looking. There is no ordinary consciousness meditating or anything to meditate on. Due to spontaneous presence without any duality of goal and conduct, there is not the slightest sense of any fruition to achieve. Regarding what is non-existent, there are no levels of realization to traverse, and so there are never any paths to journey along. Since utter lucidity is already ensured as the supreme sphere of being, there are no mandalas to visualize through the proliferation and resolution of thoughts, and no mantras, recitations, empowerments, or samaya. There is no non-referential stage of completion, such as a gradual process of dissolution in the kayas and timeless awareness, which are already ensured timelessly. There is no causality based on compounded adventitious circumstances. If any of these were the case, timeless awareness would not occur naturally. Being compounded, such awareness would be subject to destruction, and then how could it be characterized as spontaneously present and uncompounded? Therefore, within the essence of ultimate basic space, causality is transcended, and the ten attributes do not pertain. Mind itself, the ultimate meaning of genuine being, involves no effort or achievement. Please understand this in order to pacify all conceptual elaborations of existence and non-existence. This is the fifth section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomenon. 
demonstrating that transcendence of effort and achievement cause and effect. Demonstrating the transcendence of effort and achievement cause and effect. Okay, I think we can end the recording just to save that one part.